so for those who don't know strokes gained it is the new measure that the elite golfers are being looked at and measured by um because they realize that traditional statistics um fairways hit greens and regulation putts per round weren't telling the true story because tiger woods in his most dominant dominant period wasn't topping any of those tables but yet we all know how well it's how dominant he was so what tiger realized is that he didn't necessarily need to be on the fairway he just needs to get that ball as close to the green as he possibly could and then his wedge game and short game would do the rest from there so that's what we're seeing the guys on tv do now they're trying to smash it as far as they can get as close to the green but you know what if you and i try that that is going to end in disaster because yeah. this first hole here and i'm going to show you this on our google maps as well straight down the hill and the hole is over the top of that tree so it's under 300 yards away so you know a good hit getting you down here somewhere is going to get you pretty close but let me show you just how tight it is down here so if i add a point over here scoot across to the other side we're talking 41 yards really to play into this is tight as you like it even right down here adding in across here and across here we've still only got 53 yards i mean this was developed by mark brody a nasa um, mathematician so his let's face it he didn't get this wrong it's just how the media have portrayed it to us, the average golfers, that has got messed up. So that's what I'm going to try and explain to you today. So first things we want to do now is get a ball in play. Because Nick, you get probably two shots on this hole? One shot? Uh, I get one shot on this hole. Okay, so stroke index, you get one shot on this hole. So it's a par four, but for Nick and I, we're calling this a par five. What we're going to try and do is hit something over here somewhere. Give us a line into the green. Exactly what Nick did, which is basically hit it straight through the trees, <laughs> a bit of luck, and ended up right about here. We can't see the green from where we are. Now, if I did hit the perfect shot towards the green, I still wouldn't know where that ball had gone. No. So unless it does land on the green and stays there, I'm probably going to have to look for it. Yeah. And I'm, let's face it, probably going to have lost it, or even if it was a good shot. I don't have a gallery of people round the green like they do the pros do. Absolutely. <laughs> to actually know exactly where the ball lands. For that shot, you're there for nothing. Yeah. Now that shot didn't really matter. No. Okay, so you've actually nutted that, haven't you? That ball there for one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is what Tiger would have done. Strokes gain gives every shot a value and the closer it is to the hole, the better that value is because as your projected score should be lower. So this is what Tiger realised, he could bomb it up somewhere near the green and then let his short game take over. But this was all developed around what Tiger was doing, but Tiger was Tiger back then. He's not even doing the same thing now. We should be playing to our skill and abilities, not his. So that chip was a bit heavy and it's left him short of the green. But that's actually where I wanted Nick's approach shot to have finished, which would have given us an even better opportunity at looking at a net birdie, but we got the net par. So do you get... I get two shots here. Two shots on this hole, okay. So this is effectively a par six. Almost imagine you're just going to chip it through that gap. Okay. Okay. Oh, we caught, we caught tree. Bit too chippy. You're under that tree with a straight line into the green now for zero. Yep. You've still got four shots to get this in the hole. Yeah, that's true. This is now our first scoring shot. Having shots means that you should be in the same position as someone with more skill after you've used your shots. But if you're wasting your shots you have on the hole by putting them in difficult positions, you're making life tough for yourself. You've got three shots to get your par. Yep. Okay, tell yourself that. But this is now scoring. Get, this is where you now go to aggressive. This is where you now think about actually holding the thing. The beauty about doing what I'm doing right here is I've stripped everything back for Nick so it exposes exactly where his weaknesses are. Now, I don't need to be a golf coach to realise it's your short game. All we need to be doing is to be making pars and birdies to our handicaps. 
We don't need to be making pars and birdies to standard scratch. We don't scratch golfers. But yeah, on the basis that my shots don't necessarily go where I aim. Yep. I'm aiming towards the trouble. I like it, okay. I like it. So yeah, aim at the trouble and then think left thoughts, basically. Yeah. Oh, love it. Okay. Love it. We could have actually played this hole even easier and taken that tree out of bound, out, out of play, out this, and just aim for the big fat part. Because all you need to do is chip it to the top of that hill. Uh, oh. That shot was so close to perfection. It just dribbled off the back edge there. But a bit of a heavy chip, got them on the dance floor, part up to the hole, part in for another net part. There we go. Yep. So you are even par yep. So your handicap right yep, now. That's true. Think, if you just get used to scoring, rather than try to forget about it, yep. then, because, yeah, you know, we're always trying to shoot lower. Yeah. So embrace it rather than ignore it. Yeah, your second shot. Yeah. Out of five. Yeah. It's this won't be your scoring shot. No. That is fine. Yeah. That's like you're right in front of the green. With a good line in. Yeah. Happy. Yeah. Now, folks might not want to be interested in doing this because they don't want to expose exactly what it is they're bad at, exactly what their weaknesses are. It's much easier to hide behind the obvious stuff because the stuff you might need to work on might not be as fun and as sexy. Because if Nick worked on his long game, it wouldn't make a blind bit of difference to his score if he carried on with a short game like this. How, uh, how far away is the bat on this one? See, so there we go. There's a man who's thinking properly, okay? We obviously do not want to be sure. We just made sure we've got a club that's going to cover the front edge of the green even with a bad strike. It's all about getting the ball as close to the hole as you can. So if it's in range, then yeah, go for it. Yeah! So that is an actual par, but... It's an actual par. It's an actual par, which means birdie for you. Yeah. Strokes gained was used, um, developed by using something called Shotlink, which is basically um, to tracks every single shot that the pros are making or hitting so we can see where every ball lands finishes Scott Fawcett is also another stat nerd who's done the same thing and he's used that information to look at trends and patterns and those trends and patterns he's using to help um, lots of college teams but also as well lots of pros so Scott Fawcett is using this flowchart here to show elite players when and when they shouldn't hit driver. Now say that word again, elite players. He's saying that they shouldn't hit driver if there is 65 yards between penalty hazards in the landing zone of where their drives are gonna land. We haven't got 65 yards between one side of the golf course and the other on the course we're playing today. I've looked at many courses in my area as well using this flowchart, and there aren't many holes that I can actually hit driver on so we are trying to literally park a car in a space it won't fit. <laughs> There's no point hitting as far as you can if you're going to lose the ball. You haven't gained a stroke, you've lost one. So next shot, level par to his handicap, which considering you're only supposed to do that one in 10 times is quite impressive. He said this was the easiest and most relaxed way he's ever achieved it. And now we've highlighted exactly what Nick needs to work on. That's what we're going to cover next and you see these pros at the top of the leaderboard yeah. playing outrageous shots because they're winning lots of money and if they A, have the skill and B, can do it and C, if they don't do it, the person next to them is going to do it. Yeah, they have they need to, to do take it. The risk. Yeah. You don't see the guys at the bottom of the order trying to make the cut no. to get the 20,000, 30,000 checks that's going to make them play the next event and so on. Yeah, you don't which see is the... actually what golf is. Exactly, exactly, yeah.